everybody! Hey there. Hi, welcome back to episode four of season two of the GS ENC English podcast. Yeah. Today we have a slightly different episode for you guys. Yep, something a little different for you today. Yeah, this is because um, all the time people ask me, and I'm sure they ask you as Definitely. well, um, Owen, how can we study in our free time? What should we do? Right. Okay, because we always say, Learning English is all about practice, practice, practice. Mm -hmm. And people um, want to know, how can I do that? What are some resources that will help me and that I can use, you know, on a daily basis, on a regular basis? Yeah, exactly. So today we are just going to tell you about some of our favorite resources that we have found over the years that we think are very helpful um, for learning English. Right. And in addition, um, for each type of resource that we discuss, we're going to try to suggest one that will be good for maybe beginners and lower intermediates, and then another resource that might be better for kind of higher intermediates and advanced. So hopefully everybody can take something out of this video. Exactly. So first of all, well, we're going to, what we're going to do today, we'll look at websites, mm -hmm. applications, um, podcasts, and then YouTube mm -hmm. in general, all right? So first of all, let's look at websites. Mm -hmm. Now, the website I would like to recommend to you is a site that was actually recommended to me by one of my students at GS. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Albert, if you're watching. <laughs> um, this is CNN 10. Okay. So CNN 10 um, is... It's a weekly show that's presented on CNN. There's a 10-minute video just rounding up the week's news. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's slightly different. It's aimed at English learners. Right. So with that, it also comes with a transcript, a script for the whole show, mm -hmm. and then some questions, a quiz to check your understanding. Your comprehension. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if you're a higher level speaker or listener, then maybe try and watch the show and don't look at the transcript, but answer the questions. Mm -hmm. If you're a lower level, read along, circle words you don't know, answer the questions as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and they'll be very helpful for you. Right. Another similar and very useful resource is called uh, BBC News English. Yeah. Um, also very useful for anybody who is interested in the news, interested in current events. Yeah. Um, but of course, not everybody is interested in the news. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, the topics on the news are generally a little bit serious, a little bit heavy. So if you're looking for something a little bit more light, a little bit more just kind of for fun, mm. then uh, I'd like to recommend the website BuzzFeed. Mm. And actually BuzzFeed also produces um, news content, articles in particular. But the, the main thing that they produce is content that's just kind of more for fun. It's a little bit sillier. They have a lot of lists, like the top 10 things you should do on vacation, you know, that kind of thing. So the nice thing about those is that they are normally um, pretty short, um, mm. and so you can read them pretty quickly, and there are also a lot of them. So, so if you like them, then, you know, you can spend a lot of time looking at those. If you're more interested in something related to life in Korea, there's a great website called Tenmag um, mm -hmm. that is all in English, but just sort of discusses life, life in Korea, Korean society, also, you know, food and drink, that kind of thing. Great website. Indeed. Okay. Um, so those are some really good websites for you, just to pick up some authentic English material. Mm. All right. So applications, mm -hmm. smartphone apps. There's lots of them. There are thousands of them. So I'm going to recommend a few ones that are really good for developing vocabulary. Mm -hmm. First of all, these are all ones that I use for studying Korean. Mm -hmm. um, so I use these a lot. They're all very, very helpful. So the first one is an app called Memrise. 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 Now, Memrise is great for learning vocabulary. Mm -hmm. It makes learning a game. It gamifies the whole process. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really, really good for reinforcing vocabulary. Mm -hmm. So these will be preset lists of words. Right. So you go and you'll study a course and it will develop your vocabulary over time. It's very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. If you just have a list of words that you want to learn, an app that I use is called Quizlet. Mm -hmm. Quizlet, you can program all these words in there. It takes, it's quite quick actually, but you program all these words into the app and then it will Pro, you can go through a series of activities and develop 
reinforce your knowledge of those words. It's very, mm. very helpful. Yeah. The last app I want to recommend is called Duolingo. Duolingo is really, really good for vocabulary, but also basic grammar. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like Memrise. It makes a game of it. It's really, it's quite fun, good to look at. And mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, it's very good for um, lower intermediate level learners. Right, right, right. Those are all some really useful, um, useful apps there. For those mm -hmm. of you who are um, either maybe a little bit on the higher end, or for those of you who have maybe just gotten a little bit bored of constantly looking at vocabulary flashcards, um, another great app that you can use um, is an app called Audible. Hmm. And um, Audible is an audiobook application where you just download the app and then you're able to buy the audiobook. So it's it's not free. Um, you get one free audiobook per month, I think, but after that you do have to purchase them. Um, so it's not totally free, but for those of you who, who like to read but maybe don't have that much time, um, audiobooks are a great way to take in some English content while you are on your daily commute or things like that. And of course, Audible is not the only resource for audiobooks. There are lots of other apps where you can download and listen to audiobooks. That's just one very popular one. Yeah, so audiobooks, but also Audible has a whole host of podcasts. Right. So I'd like to recommend some podcasts. The, ones I, the one I'm going to recommend, I don't think is available on Audible, but mm -hmm. it is available on iTunes and Stitcher right. and all the other um, podcast. podcast providers. Mm -hmm. The one I would like to recommend is called Espresso, Espresso English. Mm -hmm. So um, Espresso English is just a series of very, very short five minute podcasts that highlight different areas of English. Mm -hmm. They might talk about vocabulary, pronunciation, grammar, a whole bunch of different stuff. So if you've just got five minutes to spare, listen to one of those episodes and it might teach you something new. Yeah, yeah, very, very useful podcast, very mm -hmm. useful resource there. Um, for those of you who would like to listen to something that is actually fully targeted at native speakers, um, mm. but is kind of actually business related, mm. there is a really interesting podcast called The Pitch. And um, a pitch is basically when you present a business idea to someone, we mm -hmm. call that a pitch or making a pitch. And so in this podcast, there, are, there is a group of investors and a basically the owner of a new business, a startup mm -hmm. owner, startup CEO, will come onto that podcast, onto that show, and he or she will pitch their idea for their business. And after they finish their pitch, after they finish giving their idea, talking about their idea, the investors will ask them some questions and they will decide whether they would like to invest in into that company or not. Mm. Um, all of the all of the companies are real. Um, so it's very interesting just to listen to how the people make that kind of pitch and what the investors think about it. For those of you who are interested in business or involved in business development, this could be very, very useful for you. Um, Another nice thing about the pitch is that all of the episodes, as far as I know, have transcripts available. Okay. So that's something you can look at along, uh, that you can look at while you listen to it. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. So some things for beginners, lower intermediate, and some for the really high level um, speakers out there that mm -hmm. can really um, give some valuable content for you in your English learning journey. All yeah. right. So. Um, as far as YouTube goes, I mean, it's kind of hard to uh, even start there because there's, there's just so much. There's so YouTube. much. There's yeah. so much. So I think the thing about YouTube is if you want to work on your pronunciation, find a pronunciation video. There, yeah. are, there are hundreds of them. If you want to work on your grammar, just type in the grammar point. There will be a very, very good teacher teaching you that grammar point with millions of views, right. millions of views. So there's a whole bunch of those. Yeah. If you want to watch about sports, about soccer, go on the BBC, look at the sports videos on there. They've got all that stuff on there. It's great. There's just so much, obviously. Right, yeah, and that's an important part of learning English as well, is sometimes you should do things in English just for fun, that you're just interested in. Mm. So, and YouTube is a fantastic resource for that. Like, if you're already interested in, like Owen said, sports, you know, you can easily find a million YouTube videos related to the sport that you're interested in. If you're interested in, you know, health, cars, 
anything. You can find a million YouTube videos and channels in English that you can watch, you know, just for fun and that will also help improve your English while you're watching. Yep. Okay. So, get on YouTube, just have a look around. If you can't find anything, message me or Lawton and right. say, oh, I'm interested in this, but I can't find anything good. We'll be happy to help. But for those of you that do know some additional resources, maybe that we haven't mentioned, we would absolutely love it if you would both email them to us so that we can find out about them. Yeah. And also, please leave a comment so that others can also um, see that and utilize that resource. Exactly. Okay, so a little bit of a different episode for, for you today, all right? So no grammar points or common errors for you to check out, but just some interesting resources for you. So hopefully you find those helpful and um, you can use those moving forward. Yeah. I'll see you next week. All right, see you next week. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye.